Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today you're going to learn about section 10.1, day one, about tangents. Up on the screen, you will see our exit question for the day. There's a lot of vocab today. It should be a short lesson, but there's a lot of vocab, so make sure that your chapter 10 note guide is handy. Let's start off with a very important definition. What is a circle? And you remember way back, we played that game with what is a polygon? And you guys gave me a whole bunch of what you thought were definitions for a polygon that were sufficient, and I proved you wrong with counterexamples. I want you to give me the same level of definition for a circle. A circle that will be a circle no matter what, even if you think very abstractly. I believe this definition will do the trick, and I think it will hold all the way through college until you start talking about non-Euclidean geometry. A circle is the set of all coplanar points that are equidistant from a central point. So imagine if you collect an infinite number of points that are all equal and distant from a central point. If you strung all those little points together, the entire set would make a circle around a center. And that's exactly how you draw a circle when you use a compass. You set the needle down and you drag the pencil along all the points that are exactly the same distance from where the needle is. That's how we make a perfect circle and that's why a compass works. Okay, for your vocab today, I'm not sure that I would write down any words. You may, but I would probably write down for sure the picture is the most important part. If you catch any words in here that strike you as being different than what you've learned before, I might copy those down. Um, well, let's get started. The circle itself is the outer green line on this drawing. The distance around it is called the circumference. So there's uh, the circle is the object, a circumference is the distance around the object. The center is the middle of the circle, the point at which all the points are drawn for the circle or that are equidistant from the center. A diameter is defined as a chord that contains the center of the circle. Now we haven't defined the word chord yet, we'll get to that on the next slide, but just for the basics, a diameter is a special chord that goes through the center of the circle. A radius is a segment drawn from the center to the circle. So taking a, and drawing a segment from the center of the circle to the circle itself at any point along that circle will give you a radius. Um, I hope I don't need to state the obvious, but the diameter is twice as long as the radius. Good to know while you're in geometry. Next, we take a circle and we introduce some lines to it. Firstly, a chord, that very, that very important word that was in our definition for diameter, a chord is a segment whose two endpoints are on the circle. So you can imagine if we pulled this segment down around here, it would go through the center of the circle and then I would have a diameter. A secant is a line and a line, the true definition of a line that extends in both directions forever. But the special thing about a secant is that it intersects the circle at two points. And then a tangent line is slightly different in that it just comes across and just barely grazes the circle exactly in one point. That might seem like an impossible task, and it is to draw, but we're going to assume this nearly hypothetical or theoretical situation where a line just touches a circle exactly one time and then bounces right off of it while still remaining a straight line. And then Point of, tangency, point of tangency is that one single point at which the tangent line hits the circle. Next we have common tangents. So now let's talk about two different circles being drawn in the plane and looking at the different ways that we can draw a tangent line that is tangent to both circles. So there are basically two ways to do it one where the tangent line goes between the two circles and one where the tangent line goes uh, outside of the two circles or does not go in between the two circles. And a common tangent line, there are two different types, one for each situation. There is an internal tangent line and there is an external tangent line where the internal one, the tangent line goes between the two circles. 
Both of these lines are still tangent. They touch each circle at exactly one point. Next set of vocab. Slightly. Not so much vocab, but definitely things to be aware of. Take two circles. Move them about. How many times can they intersect? And how many different ways can they intersect? So what is the connectivity of any two circles that you can draw in the plane? Well, you can have two intersections. It doesn't matter how big either circle is, but you can have a situation where they're overlapping each other in two points. Uh, a more special point is where the two circles are tangent at exactly one point. So kind of picture maybe pushing two coins together and where they touch is a point of tangency. Uh, you can also have this where they're uh, not concentric, but I don't know what you would call that. I'm sure there's a special name for it, but you've got one circle inside the other, yet they are touching at exactly one point. Then you can have a situation where there are no intersections. Now, this situation right here has no special name, but this one does. When they share the same center and they have no intersection, these are called concentric circles. So concentric circle is, is it where they share the same center. Tangent circles are where they intersect at exactly one point. Next example, try to do this problem. Copy down each drawing or estimate each drawing and try to draw all the possible common tangents. Label each one as external or internal. Pause the video, see if you can do that. If you draw all the possible tangents, the diagrams start to look like this. In this picture, you have a tangent here, a tangent here. Those are your both external ones, and then you have two internal ones that go through the middle. Here you only have one that goes through the middle, but it will intersect only at one point. You can actually, you know, slice through, and if these two circles are touching at one point, you can also draw a line through exactly that point, and it will only intersect once. And then it also has two external ones. Now, when you overlap them and you have a two intersection situation, uh, the tangent lines are purely external. So those are the counts. This one has two external, two internal. This one has two external, one internal. And this one has two external and zero internal, just like that. Aha, typo averted. Next, there's your homework assignment. That's all we have for today. I'll see you next time.